When I was a little kid growing up in France, my favorite sandwich after school was crunchy bread and dark chocolate. Well, when I was a little tiny bitty kid growing up in Pasadena, California, my favorite sandwich was the ice cream sandwich with chocolate and vanilla. And it mm, was wonderful. Sounds mm. good. Well, today we're going to do sandwiches, but without chocolate. And without ice cream. So let's get going. Mm. Oh, good. Happy cooking. Bon appétit. Well, here we go on our sandwich show. I'm going to do a croque monsieur, that's a ham and cheese sandwich. And I'll do a croque madame. A croque madame, Which is Good. cheese with chicken. Well, so, we'll start out with... Bread. With nice white bread. And I'm going to put a little mayonnaise on. How do you start yours, Jack? No, I just put some butter on each side. Just butter? Yes. So I put butter. And are you cooking that in a skillet? Well, you'll see. Oh, good, OK. I'm going to put a little bit of mustard on each. I'm going to cook mine in the oven. In the oven? Yes. I'm going to finish mine in the oven, so I hope you'll leave me a little bit of room. There'll be some room. Well, I don't need too much. I'm putting a piece of gruyere here. I like some gruyere, too. Nobody knows the origin of the name Croque Monsieur. It seems to have been French, don't you think? It, well, it sounds like did, it. It didn't appear till about in the 1900s. Oh, yes? So I have some Greer cheese well, on each side here. Good. And then some really nice, a really nice piece of ham in yeah, the middle. Yeah, that ham really looks good. I have chicken. When you have chicken left over, it's a good way of using it. Cut yes, thin, of it course, is. it's cooked chicken. I like to put a bit of Tabasco on mine here. You're a great one for hot stuff. Hot stuff, yes. I like herbs, you know? So maybe I'll put a little bit of chives in the middle of mine. Well, I'm just going to fold mine over like that. This way. And then I'm going to cut, cut the sides off. Oh, for mine, I put them. You're going to put them in whole, that right? way. Yes, I put the other piece of uh, bruyere this way. Mm -hmm. Leave them there. Then I put butter on the outside. Whoop, on each side. And they go directly in the oven this way. Mm -hmm. On top of well, this. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, because croque monsieur has been such a favorite sandwich, I'm gonna show you. This is a, a heavy metal cast aluminum pan that you can heat them on top of the stove. And this is fun. This is an, an electric one made with no stick. And you just make well, the sandwich good. in there. I'm it's putting very... mine in the oven here. That's very nice. But I'm going to do it in the more, kind of a more traditional way of sautéing it in clarified butter. Clarified butter is where you've melted it and you spoon it off the milky residue at the bottom of the pan. And if you do that, then the butter won't burn. It's that milky residue which burns and speckles. While yours is cooking, you're going to saute it in there. I'm going to start on lobster roll on this side. Oh, good. And I'm using those hot dog rolls. You know, when I work at Howard Johnson, we used to have a lobster roll and it was done in there, you know. So, so I'm we're going to have the real Howard Johnson one. Yes. That's so great. So we're going to saute that into butter. And what I have here, we're going to do two lobster rolls, one cold, one hot. And I have lobster pieces here just in melted butter. You have to eat them up slowly so they don't get tough. Now I'm going to put my sandwich in, Good. in here. 
And that's cooked. Do you press it as it cooked? I will press it down a little bit. Uh -huh. So that just has to brown rather lightly on the other side. Good. So I continue with mine. I'm mm -hmm. putting some uh, cracked that paper looks here. Good. That's all butter in there. Yeah, so. cracked paper and lemon juice. And this is the way they did it at Howard Johnson. The way I remember it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I hope they still do it that way. No, I doubt it. And I'm going to add a little bit of tarragon, which probably wasn't there, but I love tarragon. Here it is. And just keep it warm this way, just until you put it I'm into the I'm turning my sandwich now, but you have to be very careful that you don't get it brown too much on the bottom. Well, I'm going to turn the lobster roll, which mm, are nice. And I brown. That's a good idea, browning it. I like that. On both sides, you know? So it mm -hmm. kind of warm up the center, but it stays soft in the center. Now, this is interesting. When you do it in the frying pan, the cheese never melts. I've looked this up over a lot of places, and nobody had a good idea except an old copy of Joy of Cooking. And she said, put it in a 300-degree oven, which means that you can make a whole lot of these put them on a cookie sheet and then put them in the oven and that the cheese would melt. This only needs three or four minutes. Three or four minutes, okay. Well, mine we'll, is cooking all right in there we'll too. We'll try to remember. Now. Now, we go on with the cold lobster roll. And see, they are ready now on mm -hmm. each side and I want yep. to keep them right here. They are nice, warm. So, this one here, I thought we put the lobster. You want to give me a little bit of mustard and a little bit of mayonnaise in mm -hmm. there? I like to put a little bit of ketchup Not also. She's like a, too much. a cocktail sauce, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'll do a little bit of celery, chopped celery in there. Not much. One or two tablespoons, maybe, at the most. I'll put about two tablespoons of my own there. OK, here it is. I think maybe I'll give you a little bit of shallot or onion, you know. This is much nicer and fancier than the ones I've usually had. Well, no, in the, along the sea, you know, in Connecticut, we have that. It's kind of plastic in summer. I don't know if they put shallot maybe well, that, but up in probably Maine, a bit but of they, onion. Up in Maine, but they don't put as many nice things as this in it. That was wonderful. Good. There you are. And cracked paper. Crack paper all the time. I think we probably should taste it. Yes. To extend it, mm. what we do is a little, a little lemon. Bit lemon, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I had lemon somewhere. Well, here. Good. So I put some shredded lettuce. Give it a bit of a texture inside, mm -hmm. and it also extends it, you know? That's going to be, that's extending it. That's a good restaurant trick, isn't it? No, but it's good. Uh, <laughs> but it's good, too. <laughs> yeah. It gives it a little crunch. Shall we check on your uh, croque monsieur before yes. we finish this? I'll get it and look at mine, too. Yeah. Oh, this is hot, so I won't put it on this. Yes, the cheese is, I think cheese is melted enough. How about yours? More mine will we'll take another 10 minutes, you know? No, well, let's put, let's plate mine and we'll see how we like it. I think this is very rich. You could and actually you serve just one. One would go for two people. Yeah, look at that. That it's looks beautiful. Good. That's lovely. Or you could make a lot of them and cut them into quarters uh -huh. as an hors d'oeuvre. That's good. Now we're going to do our the cool lobster roll, and this is the one with the lettuce, right in the center here. Mm. You know, lobster is great in summer. I can't wait when summer come to well, New you can, England. You, can you know, serve them in the winter times. Yeah, in the winter like too, but the lobster are expensive in the winter, much more than in summer. And in this one, the hot one, I like to put like. Uh, you know, we line it up with a bit of, uh, mm -hmm. of lettuce like oh. this. And then we put the hot lobster in there. And that's just butter. Just plain butter. With a little bit of tarragon and lemon juice, you know, inside. Mm -hmm. And we have to be just generous with the butter here. Mm -hmm.
And that's it. This is fit for a king, you know. Well, they're done. They look good now. <clears throat> I think they are ready. It's an easy way to doing it also when you have a whole tray, you know, of it for a ball. You do them this way. And I like to trim them after, you know. I mean, if you want to be fancy, you don't have to. What's nice to But uh, trim like this, I would mm -hmm. put them this way for hors d'oeuvre, you know, to pass around, you know. To so pass with the cocktail. Yes, with the cocktail. So we can. That looks this very around. nice. What is this? You know, this is an easy thing to do on a hot hors d'oeuvre, you know, that people don't think of doing. And as I said, Just with so the croque, Madame, as well as the croque monsieur, you know, you would want to do this. So this is it for our sandwich. Now we're going to do an enormous loaf Chowder fish sandwich. This is one of Jack's inventions. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do, this is about uh, a day old bread. And what you want to do is to cut the top to do a, a shell, you know? Here. And this, you look at that, how nice it is inside, you know? I just cut it this way. And then you have a friend around who's going to pull all the insides out of the bread. Yes. That's nice to have a friend in the kitchen yeah. working. I cut it in pieces like this, you know? So like Easier that. Easier removal. Yeah, we can twist it, you know, to remove it because I need some to put in the food processor, you know, to do some bread crumb. Oh, yeah. You're gonna give me more. I put in there. And this is why it's good to use a kind of, uh, not dry, that bread is not dry, but at least a day old. And this is a very good quality bread. Look and at this. This is inside. really a country bread, isn't yes. it? Yeah, that's plenty for me for what I need to that's do all. now. Okay. Is this going to be a diet recipe? No diet recipe, no. So here we have some fresh bread crumb here. Good. And then I'm going to do a butter here, a mixture of butter, and all that fish is going to be cut into pieces. You're going to help me with that, yes. right? There I'm going to put... cutting it if you tell me right. how big you want them. Well, about one inch cube, you know. I'm putting one and a half stick of butter in there. And about three, four tablespoons almond. I'm putting almond. I'm putting about three, four cloves of garlic. Dill, a thing of dill in there. Black pepper, a bit of salt. You want at least three, four tablespoons of white wine in there, I would say. And I put a little bit of perno, which is a kind of a licorice type of taste. Perno or rica, if you don't like it, you can omit it, it's fine. It's very, very like a, southern France, isn't it? Very southern France, yes. We let that turn for a while. We have a piece of salmon, we have a yeah. piece of tuna, I have a piece of codfish here. That's okay. This is about fine now. As you can see, it's nice and yeah. uh, smells done. good. Smells good. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to leave it in there. I was going to ask you, what was this a calamari? Yeah, those are calamari. And how and, do you uh, want them cut? Sort yeah, of we're going to the cut them way? into strips. The strips, okay. Like this, you know, that'd be fine. Yeah, fine. And what okay. we are going to do is to put salt and pepper on the fish here. And for the time being, I'm going to start by putting about a third of the butter. Spraying it all around, you know, in the bottom. I'm looking at that bread. It's nice and tight, you see. There is no hole. I don't yes. want it to crack open because it may seep out a little mm -hmm. bit, you know. We have wild mushroom here, and the wild mushroom can be chopped coarsely. I think they're about fine here, but chop them a little bit. You could put about anything you wanted in this. Just about, yes. Yeah. I mean, not banana or stuff no. like this, but... No. Okay, did you put seasoning on top of this? I did not, no. Nope. Okay, you want to put some salt there? Okay, on, on everything. Pepper. No. Now, we put... I can mix the fish or arrange it separately, but you see we're going to put a layer of different color fish here. It looks good, right? It's particular uh, that it's nice, fresh fish. Yes, tell you. Some mushroom. 
Yeah, a bit of mushroom. You could do this with chicken, I guess, too. Yeah, you? absolutely, absolutely, and with fact, chicken. This is really, it's an idea for you to take off on. Yes. And then I'm going to put a little more butter. OK. And then at that point, maybe the rest of the fish. I somehow can't imagine how it's all going to turn out. Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> we'll see. Yes. And on top of it, now, what I want to put is actually, you know, the bread crumb that we add mm -hmm. at the beginning from the inside of yeah. the bread. You know, I'm going to put back on top and mm -hmm. press it. A is this bit on your top. recipe or a traditional one? No, this is sometimes that we did at home. I, I, I forget even why, you know, and I've done different interpretations oh. of it, you know, because it's, it's, it's dish. fun to do. No, no, it's Connecticut dish. Oh, a Connecticut dish. <laughs> yes. Okay. And now I would say again, probably about a quarter of a cup of a good dry white wine, you know, that I want to put on top mm -hmm. here to moisten the top. And that's it. Now it's that's ready it. to go into the oven. What's the oven temperature? Well, I would cook that around 375, 400 degrees. No. It's going to take a while, you know, at least 30, 40 what do you minutes. think, about an hour? Well, maybe not an hour, but close to. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll be looking at it. This is an enormous sandwich inspired by the south of France. It's called a giant pain bagna. Yes, a type of pain bagna, which really means Bath bread, you know. Uh, Bagna means a bath. And so bread in the south of France, they do that. And it's they bathed in olive oil. Bathed with olive and oil and olive. They say it isn't any good unless the oil comes down and falls off your elbow. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's wonderful. So this you know, this you is can... great for a big party. Yes. We're going to show you how to make it from top to bottom. Yes. Let's start making the pain bagna then. So we start with one of those nice focaccia type of flat bread, and you cut that the same way you cut a cake, you know. Don't turn your knife, but turn your hand like this. To cut all around until you find your first cut. There you are. And we start with... I put a little olive oil on it. OK. But this will be the top. I'm putting the vinaigrette in it. Yeah. OK. But I think we need a little So maybe, maybe we don't have to put the vinaigrette. Maybe oh, we, we just put have, a bit of... A we bit have of the a... vinaigrette, too, I think. OK, one layer of lettuce. So you want to do a little bit of vinaigrette there? Fine. And after that, I'm putting some brie cheese here, you know? And I'm going to... This, this is kind of a Leonese version if you of, want, the, yes. of the Marseillaise. I'm going to trim a bit the outside of the cheese. We don't have any chopped shallots, do we? No chopped okay, shallots, no. Give me a shallot, I'll chop one up. All right. Here we are. And I need a little knife. You want a little knife? Here it is. You've kept them all on your side. I kept all the knife on my side. Now I trim the cheese, and I'm going to cut it into slice like this. So I'll put first the cheese on top of it here like this. Yeah, that's That's it. a good idea, having the cheese in. Yeah, that give, of course, some richness to it. So on top of the cheese, I think one large tomato is going to be enough. I cut it into thin slices. All right, I'm putting the tomato now, so... Got a little vinaigrette on You that? know what I should put first? I think I'll put the olive first. See, and those oh, are those pitted... Oh, those are the pit, olives. Yes, pitted black olive. Oh, like they're this. lovely. Yeah, like that they can wedge in between mm. the, the cheese and all that. I'll put a little bit of vinaigrette on. Well, you can put some on my tomato. Yeah. That's it. That looks good already, right? I think we should salt the tomatoes a little bit. Yes, and then, well, I'm putting anchovy filet on top of it, you know. Now, some people hate anchovies, and if you really hate them, you could do sardines perfectly well. Yeah, exactly, or tuna. You mentioned before that the real pambania is, yes, has with, tuna in with it. With tuna in it. Right. So some good flaked tuna, not the kind of tuna that's packed in water, 
That's what the anti-fat people have done to the tuna fish industry that we, disintegrates after a while. Yes. Tuna packed in olive oil. Do we have enough vinaigrette on top, right? Nope. Did I forget anything? I mean, you can put other things from red pepper or green pepper and, uh, and so forth. So we put the other cover on top and the idea is of course to wrap it up and put a weight on top of it so that all the taste kind of mingle together. And there you would want to put it on a, on a tray like that with another tray on top and then I sit on it. Now we put a big pot to, and you keep that either in your refrigerator or in a cold place you know, you can keep it overnight or at least a couple of hours. Mm. And this is the way we do our pan banya. I think we could taste it Let's now, yes? It you know, with picnic like that, I love white wine. I love red wine. Mm -hmm. Any type of wine is good with any type of picnic. I like beer. You like beer? We haven't had any beer in this series. Well, where is my white wine, then? Well, you're going to have to drink beer. Okay. <laughs> and white wine afterwards. Afterward? Okay. And now we're ready to taste it. You want a little piece like mm -hmm. this? That's lovely. And now while the seafood bread is cooking, mm. it should be ready pretty soon. That's good. Yes. I think beer will go very nicely with it. Uh-huh. Now, you think your seafood bread is ready? Close to. Good. There's our yeah. great fish loaf. Yes, we that got that. That looks marvelous. Yep. yippee yay! -yay. This is a big sandwich, huh? That's beautiful. Yes, it's hard. It took quite a long time in the oven, you know? See how crutch they eat? And look mm -hmm. at the center of that bread. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? With That's all the beautiful. fish, all the juice came out of it. Mm -hmm. Also that, you know, you crush the a sound piece like that. The sound, I mean, this would be a good big portion. Let me cut a, a small piece so we can have it flat like that and see the way the mm -hmm. butter and the bread Mm. I cut it like this. If you want to test it, see the fish is cooked and it does take a long time. There is an enormous amount of juice from the fish, mm. the mushroom and all that which comes out and goes through it. So you really have to season it. Mm. It's crunchy. That right? has a, a lovely flavor in that, that green sauce. I'm delighted to love it. It's just beautiful for you. Well, with that delightful sandwich, I think we deserve a rich, buttery Chardonnay. This is from the Santa Maria Valley. Mm. It was great cooking all those sandwich with you. I hope you're going to do sandwich for your family. And this wine is very good with it. I think this should give you a lot of new ideas on sandwiches. Yes. So, bon appetit. And happy cooking. That was fun, Jack. It was great. Presentation of KQED San Francisco.